Hey there. Okay, I want to talk to you about composition now. So we started by talking about visual, I'm sorry, all of these are visual structure. We started by talking about formal elements, and now I want to talk about composition, um, which is these kinds of terms. Visual structure is all the stuff you see when you look at the artwork, minus sort of the, the, the recognizable subjects, the meaning, and, and things like that. So where things are, how they're arranged. And in the last video, I just talked about the parts, right? The stuff, the colors, and the textures, and the patterns, and the lines, and the shapes, and the masses, all that. So when we talk about composition, we're talking about how these things are arranged, whether these things are lines or shapes or colors or people and horses and hills. Uh, we're talking about where stuff is and specifically where stuff is in relation to itself, other stuff in the picture. Right? So I want to talk uh, uh, in no particular order, starting with balance. So balance is uh, when the, generally we think of the two sides of the artwork um, being equal, equally important visually. Um, but it could also be the, the various parts of an artwork, so it could be all the way around. Um, sometimes we talk about radial balance, which is all the way around a circle. Um, a pizza or a pie is radially balanced. You have the same amount of pepperoni on each slice, roughly. Um, so balance, we usually talk about symmetry or asymmetry. So if I were to divide this artwork right down the middle, is this area as important? Does it have the same kinds of things that draw my eye or the same amount of you know attention that I want to place there as this section over here? These two are... Are, and, and if they do, that would be a bilaterally symmetrical artwork, both, same size, both sides equally important. If one side draws our attention more than the other, like this red area here draws our attention and all the rest of this is kind of similar, then that might be asymmetrical balance, which means balance. It doesn't feel wrong or weird, but it draws our attention uh, to one side more than the other. This artwork it is more or less balanced. We've got some focus right here. This isn't the best example for either one, frankly. And I'll try to do a video a little bit later that gives you some ideas of both balance and lack of balance. Um, but I want to move on because uh, we'll have chances to try that. Rhythm and movement. We talked about movement earlier when we talked about the horses and the, you know, looking like they're running or people looking like they're running or walking. Um, but movement compositionally is talking about how your eye or how the viewer's eye moves through an artwork. So we talked earlier about the movement this way, that we would walk kind of down the hill with these uh, figures, or that we would kind of follow this, uh, the line of these hills up into the artwork. Those are the kinds of movement we're talking about here. We also talk about rhythm as giving a sense of movement. So rhythm or repetition um, is when you have similar stuff, either similar colors, similar shapes, similar sizes, um, similar textures, things like that, repeating. Um, so here we have similar hill, similar hill, similar hill, similar hill, right? Um, all these are the same color, the same size, more or less. And, or, uh, similar colors and similar sizes and they repeat and they give us a sense of rhythm across the background here. We also though have similar sizes and similar shapes if we work through all of these hills. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, lots of hills here that are similarly sized and shaped. That also gives us a sense of rhythm and it can move our eye through the composition into the middle or out to the area where the, the text is here, or the background. Um, we have repetition of similar shaped masses here, right? People and animals that are similarly shaped. We have repetition of little lines in the grass. If you see pattern, you're probably looking at rhythm of some sort. Um, and there are a couple, there's a, a linear rhythm that one might talk about where you're specifically moving in a line. Um, Nonlinear rhythm might be kind of spread out evenly. That's rhythm kind of in a nutshell. Emphasis and contrast, uh, we kind of talked about at the beginning. Where do you look? What is an area that draws your eye? So here we might have the red and the figures, uh, the darker horse. Those are all things that draw our eye houses or faces, 
might draw our eye. Houses in a landscape, faces in a person or group of people. Um, the text and this figure is different in sort of character as well as, it, you know, it's, it's a nude lady with wings. We don't have any other nude ladies with wings here. Um, there's text. We don't have any much other text here. Um, but also the color and the tone is different. All of those draw our eye to an, an emphasis point or, or a contrast. Um, we also have this kind of darker area that we've mentioned in, that I mentioned in the previous video and any of those can be emphasis. You might in an artwork have several areas of emphasis or several areas of, of stronger or less strong. So maybe this general area is an area of emphasis because of the, the people and the animals and the line, uh, the, the implied line of them moving, but the uh, red is a more particular emphasis or focal point. You could also have an artwork that is a focal, as in there's nothing in particular to look at. We don't see as much of that in the time period we're going to be talking about in this class. Um, Scale and proportion. Now, scale and proportion simply means big and small, right? But there are some real subtleties to how we might talk about that. For example, if you look at these figures back here, these guys here, and maybe this guy right here, or any of these people in the foreground, the people in the foreground are bigger than the people, so I just have an arrow set up, but that arrow is smaller than the arrow that's closer to us. And both of those arrows, um, or I mean, both of those people, we understand as, as viewers that those are the, those are both realistically sized people in, like, if you met them, but in the, in the imaginary picture space of the painting, they are, we are getting a sense of depth. So in that imaginary space, they seem to be the same size. But if we are talking about what literally is on the picture plane, this one literally is smaller. It's painted with less paint, right, than this one here. And that is proportion, right? So that specifically is using proportion to show the illusion of depth and giving us a sense of depth that one thing is farther away than another thing. You see the same thing going on with some of the hills. There might be some smaller hills farther away. Um, houses that are farther away are smaller, all of those sorts of things. You can also have realistic proportions in a body. So like my head is proportional to my shoulders, I hope, right? And this guy's painted so that his head is roughly proportional. It's how we think it should be compared to his body. A painter might, on the other hand, make someone's head really big compared to their shoulders or, you know, their feet really big or something um, to make them look funny or to make them look strange or to emphasize a particular part. Um, changing proportions can be used to show what appears to be realistic or like depth um, or can be used to to show something not realistic in some way and I just have a realistic example here but um, other times we'll talk about not realistic examples um, unity uh, uh, sorry one more thing here I've got this list of composition and as I was talking about scale and proportion I mentioned depth and oftentimes and I just forgot to put it here oops um, oftentimes depth is something that shows up when we're talking about um, formal elements as well so how the illusion of depth is shown and there's lots of ways to show the illusion of depth um, for example here we have uh, hills that are larger than farther away hills we just talked about that with the people but also this hill is blocking some of that hill it's overlapping it and we can't see behind we've also talked about shading that was used to give us a sense of depth on various things and contour lines we also in this particular artwork have a sense of atmospheric perspective a little bit and that is that the farther away things are bluer and kind of faded a little bit compared to things that are closer it's not a real good example of it in this artwork but we do sort of see it. Um, you can also have perspective, like linear perspective, and in the houses we see a little bit of that. We'll talk about that more in this class. All right, um, one more thing to do with scale and proportion 
and that is we can have the scale of figures or of houses or of hills, whatever subject it is, the scale of a thing in an artwork compared to the entire artwork. Somebody in the first discussion forum mentioned how when he had seen the Night Watch in real life, it was so big. You're just amazed at how big it is. And that can be a, an important piece of scale. But so can how big the figures are compared to either the whole painting. So like, this figure is very small compared to the entire painting. It would seem different than one where the horse is the entire painting. It fills up the whole space. And compared to real life. So this horse and rider is probably a lot smaller than a real life horse and rider. And if you're standing in front of it, you understand that a little differently than, than just looking at an artwork of it. All right, moving down our list here. Unity, variety, and harmony I want to talk about kind of together. So I kind of steer away from you guys talking about much unity, variety, and harmony. And that's because it's it's really easy to see unity. It's easy to see harmony. The artwork just seems harmonious, but it's kind of hard to talk about. Why is this harmonious? Well, the colors are similar to one another in the background, and they're in a similar color range as the yellow colors that are up front. The, the green and yellow are on the same side of the colors. But it gets a little bit more complicated. It's also really easy to be like, it looks nice, so it's harmonious. And that's true, but I want you guys describing more than it looks nice right and so that's part of the reason i steer away from that simply put or, or maybe i should see say specifically put unity is when we see things that are similar and variety is when we see things that are different so similar shapes lots of similar shapes throughout this artwork all these hills lots of similar sizes the people are all similar sized up here they're smaller but similar sized up here spacing the hills are all evenly spaced in the background. The people are kind of spread out through the middle ground. Um, uh, you know, t lines, shapes, colors. We have evenly spaced lines that divide up the, the, you know, plowed fields on the hillsides. All of that is unity. Variety can be any differences. So this is much redder than most, most of the other stuff. Here we have a bridge and we didn't see any bridges before. Um, this has both trees and not trees on the hill, right? That's a variety. So um, it, you can talk about these things, just be aware that particularly harmony and to some extent unity and variety can be kind of simplistic to talk about. So you have tons and tons of things that I've just talked about and I haven't really covered everything. Um, but that means that anytime you're talking about an artwork, there's a, quite a bit that you can be talking about it also means that you don't need to cover it all. If I'm asking you to describe the visual structure, you're going to pick out a few of those things that are important and not try to talk about all of them in every single artwork. Thanks.